If there is a message for us today, I believe it is to learn to live from our heart in love. These short lessons, hopefully, will help to inspire you to live with purpose, love passionately, and inspire others. We are the change agent our world needs. I'm Helen Taves. Step into the river today with me to explore the mysteries of God. They are not hidden from us, but for us to discover. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Understanding Dreams and Visions. Actually, this is take two. Unfortunately, uh, because of computer problems, I wasn't able to get the last recording uh, uploaded to our, our uh, website. So I'm redoing it here and feel really sad that the whole group isn't here. We had such an amazing time of discussion and, and people being able to uh, share their stories yes, or, or last Wednesday. But we'll be back um, in the next session, part two, this, this coming week. And uh, I hope you enjoy. If this is your first time with us, welcome, welcome, welcome. Going to uh, go on to our, our PowerPoint. And let me see. Hmm. There we go. All right. Here we are. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for take two. Boom. Understanding dreams and visions. Proverbs tells us that it's the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings, hey, that's us, to search out a matter. God places great value on our seeking out the things that he conceals. Have you ever played hide and seek with your children? You hide only because you want to be found for the enjoyment of the finding. God plays hide and seek with us. He hides his message, fully intending for us to come and find it, as to find more of him in the process. Accurate interpretation of our dreams come as a result of an intimate relationship with God. The closer we are in relationship and the greater our desire to understand the meaning of dreams, a holy curiosity ignites within us. It's like a pilot light that turns on for a furnace. It will drive us towards searching until we find rest. We often learn as much, if not more, in the discovery process of seeking the Lord than we ever do interpreting the dream itself. Dreams that or originate from God are always infused with his power and purpose. They can guide our lives, providing wisdom and direction, and may even show us ways that we have to change. Some dreams will re reveal our life callings and anointings. Others will strengthen and encourage us. Others yet will cause us to change course so we can get on the right track. Dreams can be prophetic in nature and may convey as much needed spiritual, even practical insight. Though God communicates freely with mankind through dreams, the meaning of his message is often hidden in dream symbols. With an accurate interpretation using scriptural methods of interpretation of the symbols, knowing his way, ways and his word, knowing his character, we are able to respond to him when he speaks in dreams and visions. As we begin this journey, some of you will have on hand the student manual, which will help you to keep track and record as we go. It can be an amazing study aid to go back over details you may want to research more. If you do not have one, then don't worry. I've tried to put the majority of the manual on this PowerPoint, and I encourage you to take a screenshot of the pages if it would help as we go for the sake of time and clarity, I will not read all that's on the screen, but will highlight one or two points that will give understanding. For the first time listening to this study, I would suggest just listen. Jot down a few notes, especially if you have questions. The series will be recorded and available free on YouTube and through our website, theriver474.com. So don't worry about missing anything. We will have a time for Q&A and possibly an extra uh, session as a lab for those who would like to take to have the time where we can collectively might be able to help your dream or vision in particular. For those with manuals, periodically there's this small PG symbol by a headline that may help you to see where we are if necessary in your manual. 
not everything we discuss will be in the in the manual. And if it's not, then it's in blue type on here on the screen. And I hope this helps as we begin. Here are some of the study aid and inspirational material that are used in this course. So just take a screenshot of it. I, I won't go through that whole list now. My personal favorite uh, resource, he was far more than a resource. He actually became a, a, a true mentor for me as I went to all his courses and got to, to meet him and know him. I just want a special thanks to John Paul Jackson for all that he's put into this generation. He is very deeply loved and missed by many. So dreams and visions is God speaking to you. There's a growing need to understand the ways that God speaks to each one of us personally. Understanding dreams and visions according to what the Bible illustrates is one of the most interesting and also misunderstood areas that God uses to communicate to us. It's time to take back, actually to bring to the fore what God's way of speaking to us is. The new agers have undertaken to steal from the sons of God what the Lord wants us to know about our dreams and visions. One of the best avenues they are using is television, movies, and events like occult fairs that are captivating and confusing this generation that's hungry for the supernatural. Programs depicting the supernatural enter our homes by way of entertainment and are being caught and taught as the real thing when the counterfeit is engaging the minds and hearts of the uninformed. Joel 2, 17 says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, those who know him and those who don't. It's not a special club. All of Yahweh's creation, all of humanity has the spirit of God poured out on them. This course is, help, is designed to give you a launching place for your own study, to give you a biblical foundation that will inspire you to further dig and explore this subject. It is meant for you to develop and understand your own dream language. It's not to make you a dream interpreter, although you may be used in that capacity at times, not just to interpret your own dreams, but to help others. You will learn the importance of dreams and visions and how they may impact your life. You will develop skills and know the importance of dreams and the different methods to recording your dreams so that you'll be able to have a greater capacity in understanding, learning their language and purpose. We'll look at areas such as foundational elements of dreams, how, how uh, things are represented in scripture, things like symbols, metaphors that will help you to understand what the Lord is saying in a dream. You will learn that color has significance, as do numbers or names. You will learn how to apply these elements to interpreting what God speaks to you, broadening your scope of understanding. Most importantly, it is the goal of this study for you to know the giver of the dream better, to hear him through his way that he speaks to you in your dream life, and especially to bring you closer to him. We need to know that the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God and reveals them to us, 1 Corinthians, and that dreams are one of the ways. This is only a beginner course, one to hopefully whet your appetite for more. Other references for your personal studies are on the uh, appendix or, or actually on the, on, that were on the screen just prior to this. <clears throat> Fun fact, dreams and visions are mentioned over 200 times in scripture and their records and events take up about a third of your Bible. If you sleep eight hours a day, a third of your life is spent asleep. If you are 60, 20 some years have been spent sleeping. Wow, that's staggering actually. Let's look at some dreams that influenced our world. Psalm 16, seven says, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. Jasper Johns flag. Jasper Johns was, was supporting himself as a window dresser in New York City in the mid 1950s when he had a dream about painting an American flag. He acted upon his dream inspiration. His flag painting became a part of revolution in American art. Paul McCartney, Paul McCartney received the tune for yesterday in a dream. The Beatles were in London in 1965 filming Help while staying in a small attic room of his family's house on Wimpole Street in a dream, Paul heard a classical string ensemble playing the tune. The rest is history. Okay. 
Mary Shelley's Frankenstein was inspired by a dream. In the summer of 1816, 19-year-old Mary Wollstonecraft Godwin and her lover, the poet Percy Shelley, whom she married later that year, visited the poet Lord Byron in his villa beside Lake Geneva in Switzerland. Waking one morning, she said, what terrified me will terrify others. I need only describe the specter which had haunted me on my midnight pillow. On the morrow, I announced that I thought of a story. I began that day with the words. It was on a, a dreary night of November, making only a transcript of the grim terrors of my waking dream. Frankenstein came to life. This is, this is the most interesting story I didn't know. But Abraham Lincoln dreamt of his assassination and he recounted the dream to his wife just a few days prior to his death. There seemed to be a death-like stillness about me. When I heard subdued sobs as if a number of people were weeping, I thought I left my bed and wandered downstairs. There the silence was broken by the same pitiful sobbing, but the mourners were invisible. I went from room to room, no living person was in sight, but the same mournful sounds of distress met me as I passed along. It was light in all the rooms, every object was familiar to me, but where, where were all the people who were grieving as if their hearts would break? I was puzzled and alarmed. What could the meaning of all this Determined to find the cause of state of things so mysterious and so shocking, I kept on until I arrived at the East Room, which I entered. There I met, I was met with a sickening surprise. Before me was a catafalque on which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments. Around it were stationed soldiers who were acting as guards. There was a throng of people, some gazing mournfully upon the corpse whose face was covered others weeping pitifully. Who is dead in the White House? I demanded of, the, of one of the soldiers. The president was his answer. He was killed by an assassin. Then came a loud burst of grief from the crowd, which awoke me from my sleep. Isn't that incredible? The novelist Robert Louis Stevenson said of his now classic novel, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, that it was conceived, written, rewritten and re-rewritten and printed inside of 10 weeks. In 1986, or sorry, 1886, it was conceived in a dream. Jack Nicholas discovered a new golf swing. He credits to improving his golf game from a dream he had in 1964. Wednesday night, I had a dream. It was about my golf swing. I was hitting them pretty good in the dream. And all at once, I realized I wasn't holding the club the way I'd actually been holding it lately. I'd been having trouble collapsing my right arm and taking the club ahead away from the ball, but I was doing it perfectly in my sleep. So when I came to the course yesterday, I tried it the way I did in my dream and it worked. I shot an 86 yesterday and a 65 today. <laughs> way to go, Jack. Others include Elias Howe, the inventor of the sewing machine, Albert Einstein, Otto Lowy, Salvador Dali, the artist, Igmar Bergman, the film director, and Handel, the composer who wrote The Messiah. All these people gathered and applied information accumulated in their dreams. We're in good company. Two major influences in dream interpretation are contemporaries, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Freud and Jung are two of the 20th century's most influential voices regarding dream interpretation. They were secular in their beliefs and believed answers to life came through the mind and the soul. They had no grid for the spirit of man, nor did they recognize the influence of God on our lives. Their philosophy birthed many dream interpretation theories based on the power of the soul. Freud's filter for his, most of his work was sexuality. Carl Jung said, my life is a story of self-realization of the unconscious. They and others formed the foundation of some of what people believe still today and refer to in dream interpretive processes. The problem is if their soul can interpret what you need, then there is no need for God. Dream interpretation must be 
from the point of view that God wants to speak to you. Genesis 4, 8, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. We're going to look at three, biblical, natural, and carnal, and we see them in the word. In 1 Corinthians 2 tells us, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God given to us by God. It says the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The natural or the secular man does not receive the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. In 1 Corinthians, it says, I, brother, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. For where there are envy, stripe, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So these three, these scriptures show us how there are three main areas that we can operate from in our discerning process, the spiritual, the natural, or the carnal. The spiritual first here. To think spiritually, we need to realize that God speaks from the outside of our time domain, external to internal. When God speaks, he gives you understanding from his vantage point. Even before the earth was born, he knew you. You were born for such a time as this. In spiritual terms, dreams may have plural meaning. One symbol in a dream may have different levels or le layers to them. And this is particularly interesting to see as dreams when they are reviewed years later. And it's a good reason to keep a dream journal. Spirit interpretation will give you eternal results, not temporal, eternal. Intu they're intu intuitively derived and they're illogical to many earthly events. They, the intuitive um, point of view is your aha moment. We'll talk about that again. Spiritual are theocentric. They're based on what God wants for our destiny. The focus is on God. Isaiah 55 says, my ways are not your ways. If your interpretation is from a natural or sec secular, then from it, they will be from internal to internal it's this your psyche will give you the answer this is also our unconsciousness speaking that may come from trauma unresolved issues that are lodged in us so it's it's um it's not a good interpretation so they have singular meaning one symbol will always mean the same thing and soul interpretation will give you temporary change we're going to look at symbols and language to understand this a lot more fully Interpretations from natural source are introspective. They look, you look from the inside of you for the answer. It's like navel gazing, looking to yourself for your own answers. It's about your inner child, masculine, feminine sides and things like that. And there are programs or steps to learn these things. But unless we look to God within, we will not break the cycles if needed. Dreams can bring us to the answer and deliverance may happen in a dream as well. We're going to see that. In a natural interpretation, it is pure soul. If your soul is the reasoning, then you don't need Jesus. So this, uh, natural believes they are logical and logic will fail you if your logic is based on the wrong facts or truth. They will have natural interpretation that will soothe the soul and personal desires. And natural interpretation is focused on self. When God really wants to show you the bigger picture, natural or secular positioning will seldom give us godly results. Carnal, the person who is carnal is born again, a believer in Christ, but refuses to grow up to a, a maturity in faith and therefore is stuck in his carnal life. Jeremiah 29 says, speaks about dreams that you cause to be dreamed, that would be a carnal person. And, or it says, speaks about visions of your own heart. These are dreams and visions that are produced by your own logic. And the ones that tell you, uh, that you tell God to do things your way. The ways of God seem foolish still. Okay, we're gonna look at an overview. <clears throat> In Numbers 12, six to eight, there are two points that are, we're gonna look at. One, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision, and B, I speak to him in a dream. So he makes, to, uh, he makes himself known in dreams, and he speaks to us in visions. 
um, I'm, I make myself known in vision. God communicates to us in a way that reveals his character and his ways. And he did that with Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul was killing Christ followers. He saw Jesus in a vision. The very person he was persecuting, Jesus wasn't angry. He simply asked a question to get his attention. He said, why are you persecuting me? And it went from there. Uh, he he uh, visions are more literal. They are. They often are exactly what they appear to be. Visions may seem odd at times. You may see something at times that others may not. Like the illustration in this picture, the whole crowd of people, all different kinds of people, of ways of life, etc., doing different things. But you might see very clearly something that others don't. And go with those, go with those, because the Lord is maturing you to, uh, for, for other purposes, to, to really see into lives that will help make a difference. You will remember visions more clearly. When you do remember it, it's like the first time you had it. I call it the Velcro effect. They just stick to your memory. You can walk back into the vision anytime and pick it up where you left off to learn more. Isn't that an interesting thing? That is why spending time in ascensions and meditations are so valuable. Visions that become clear is actually you entering into a dimensional place. He said, I make myself known to him in visions. With practice, patience, repetition, it becomes a beautiful and intimate place with the Lord. If you have seen Jesus in a vision or a dream, you can go back into it anytime and actually carry on the conversation. Visions aren't just a one-off. Also, he says he speaks to him in a dream. He speaks to us in a dream, but dreams are more symbolic. They may appear as similes, metaphors, parables. We need to suspend our logic and linear thinking and let God speak his way. In the Bible, skilled interpretation will unlock more scripture, letting scripture interpret scripture. He'll speak in, in similes, comparing two things. You may see a lion, which would indicate brave as a lion, if it's the context of the dream. This picture would say crazy as a fox, or how about mad as a hatter? Metaphors are comparison as well. Time is money life, just a bowl of cherries. So again, with the context of the dream, whatever you see, maybe a metaphor, and it'll speak to you clearly. A parable is a fictitious something made up, designed to teach a lesson through comparison. When you hear the story, you can relate it to your own life. It's like an illustration for the points in a sermon, also found in scripture. For instance, uh, I think there, there's a lot of them in, in Matthew, one after another. And one of them is the kingdom of heaven is like sowing a seed in a garden. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed or a merchant seeking pearls. Parables can be found in your dreams the same way. They are sometimes like looking at a cartoon or a caricature of a person, things that are exaggerated, a picture actually saying more than words. I had a, a dream I'm going to share with you because I'm going to use it for some of the illustrations as, as we go in this course. I had a dream where I was getting ready to go on a trip. It was in a chalet of sorts somewhere, I don't know. When I went out to check uh, out to the deck to go, go to the car, I saw that I was on the side of a hill with a creek running down the chalet. A huge mudslide started coming down the creek. And then I started going back into the chalet, a huge, larger than life, mud ball, perfect ball almost hit me. It landed right on the deck, blocking my way back into the house. It took up the entire space on the deck beside me. I tried to get around it and couldn't get over it. 10 feet high at least. But I ended up under the deck in yucky mud and could hardly move. I woke up quite distressed. I prayed and I asked the Lord what it was about and felt he said that it was someone or something that was coming against me with dirt. It was, some, it was trying to stop me from moving on. The Lord said, I want you to humble yourself and repent. I was not told what to repent. I couldn't think of anything, but I prayed in submission. 
my prayer was this lord place my i place myself in your hands i humble myself before you ask your forgiveness for anything i may have said or done to contribute to this mud this dirt coming at me i ask for your cleansing and continued direction to remain clean and pure before you I pray too for the person and people involved, ask your forgiveness for them that this might not bear fruit in their lives. I ask you to look after this mud ball and bring life and restoration to the situation and to the lives that it has affected. Lord, I do not want to cooperate with darkness in any way. Thank you for the cleansing blood of Christ that I might walk free. This dream and my response changed something in me. I revisited the dream, saw in the spirit right after I prayed that the huge mud ball was reduced to a puddle that could not or would not be any problem. I, didn't, I did not do anything but bow my knee and repent, asking God to look after the situation. I also saw as I finished the prayer, as I revisited the scene, a dark, very small figure was on top of the hill. I could do nothing but stand there, and it could do nothing but stand there. I will stay humble. The Lord will deal with whatever, whomever that might be coming against his plan for my life. So this is an example of a spiritual interpretation and how the Lord actually protected me. I left the entire encounter in his hands. There's an epilogue seven years later. And I'm sharing this dream because sometimes you don't understand right away what happens in a dream, why the dream is important, and how the Lord worked in it. But this was a gift that I, uh, seven years later, I found out that some people had been, that I had been walking with and whom I trusted had begun to accuse me of witchcraft. It had been going on for years. I immediately took it to my pastor when I found out because I was teaching the school of the supernatural in our church, and I didn't want him to hear from someone else. His reply was, smiling at me, Helen, the curse doesn't land without a cause. He knew my heart and character, and that was comforting. In the years following, I've had many come from that particular group that tried to cause me harm. They confessed and repented because they had partnered in the mud ball gossip. The best part was God had taken care of it all and the mud ball, and it had no effect. It was indeed a puddle. Dreams transcend four dimension, uh, the four dimensions that we're familiar with, height, depth, width, and time. We learn through our dreams that all of those elements that we are familiar with can be shown differently in a dream. In Genesis 42, verse 2, Joseph interpreted the baker's faith and timetable of his demise in an amazing way. The baker was carrying bread in a basket on his head. The birds came after that bread three times. From that, Joseph knew these three confrontations meant three days. Why three? Well, it happened three times, but how did he know it referred to a period of time? In the days in which this event took place, bread lasted only one day. Bread was a major part of the Hebrew culture and understanding gave Joseph accurate interpretation. Dreams and visions allow us to be in more than one place or dimension at a time. We are unlimited in our dreams. We can fly. We can be on another planet or country. Dreams allow us to go back and forth in time or age. We can see ourselves anywhere from the womb to the tomb and anywhere in the cosmos. For instance, in dreams of childhood, uh, maybe God showing us a situation that we can revisit to be released from trauma. In the cosmos, it might be about our future. We are unlimited. In dreams, we can see from another person's point of view. Imagine God showing you the heart of another in a dream and how amazing that would be, especially if the reason for it was for us to change and be able to love them more. That actually happened with me. I was having a great deal of trouble with uh, a couple that were in a group uh, that, that uh, were in our home. And in a dream, the Lord showed me uh, uh, their hearts and a, a trauma that had happened with a, a child in their, in their home, and that they were bringing that in, into the meeting, and it just broke my heart, and I was able to deal with them with so much more love and understanding. Dreams do not seem to be inside of us. We seem to be inside the dream at times. 
when we realize and have that aha moment of understanding in a dream, we'll walk in and out of these situations and we'll see that although we might have had a dream, you'll see that this dream was given you and you're actually entering the dream. John Paul Jackson said, God will make a dream just for you. I think that kind of a dream was when it was for that couple that I just told you about as well. A dream can move you from any dimension to another. And Paul says that in, in 2 Corinthians when he said, I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows. You see, often your dream will sense this truth. Dreams are often written with disappearing ink. You will seldom remember them unless you write them down. Also, those of you who record your dreams are often shocked that this apparently short dream takes volumes to write down. We're going to help you with this later so you can get more sleep. Dreams are not just experienced at night. Think about an intense time of daydreaming. It's almost like your physical world is suspended and you are aroused from it. Like in sleep, these have value and may need interpretation. People in dreams mean different things. They may not uh, just be about the person. If you see a president or a prime minister, this may mean that you're going to be called into po politics, maybe. Or maybe the Lord is showing you that you are being governed by something that you have made higher than him. The context of the dream will help you to understand. Faceless people, prophetic, government official, pop stars may appear. They may have a meaning to you. They may not have a meaning to another person. In these pictures, I think the whole globe knows, even that cartoon, who that person is. But maybe not so much the next one. Maybe you'd have to be Norwegian to know that was the king of Norway. Who knows? Different experiences, places, and colors all have meaning. One of the reasons that is best learned by the dreamer to interpret with the Holy Spirit is that the people, places, and things, the elements in your dream has understanding best known to you and God knows how to speak your language. For example, Canada, if you see flowers in a boot, they are flowers in a boot. We would relate to that. But if you're from the UK and someone said flowers in a boot, a boot is the trunk of a car. And this might be the picture that they see. <clears throat> We're going to look at definitions of, of dreams. Job 33, 14. God may speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. Most of us would say that if God spoke audibly all the time, we of course would hear him. In John 12, it says, a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by heard it saying, some said it thundered. Others were saying, an angel has spoken to him. God, here we see, God audibly spoke. Those standing by heard the voice of God. Even some that walked with Jesus didn't hear. Why would God speak and not be heard by everyone in the vicinity? It, how, how is that possible? Well, some of the reasons we don't perceive that God is talking to us might be, number one, because of some of our own character issues, motives of our own heart, that are contrary to God, and therefore we dismiss what we hear. God isn't looking for us to be perfect, but when we, but we can block God's voice when our ego gets in the way. Also, we block God's voice when, with the honor that we give to others, how you hear from others all correlate to your ability to hear from God. How are you listening? How do you hear from your friend? What about your spouse? your partner, your children. These are all barometers of how you actually pay attention to God, really. When I heard that, that line, how, how do you listen to your, your husband, to your children? It really moved me because I realized the people that are closest to us, sometimes we dismiss the most. We are busy doing in our world doing other things. Check yourself. How are you listening? And can God trust you with his secrets? Do you exaggerate? Because exaggeration is the same as lying. 
We may have different upbringings, bias, theological perspective. Our spiritual and cultural upbringing may be a bias. Also, what you know or don't know about the Bible may be an influence on your interpretation. Unbelief. Well, that speaks for itself. It's very difficult to speak to someone who's made up their mind on a subject already. Spiritual bias or we just don't believe that God speaks in dreams today or uses supernatural means to communicate us will hinder our perceiving. If the picture on your, on your left is Jesus, the way you're taught in, in Sunday school, I got asked the question, could he appear wearing blue jeans? I'll leave it. We often don't remember our dreams because we are dismissive of, of them. We say, oh, it's just the pizza. I was overtired and we make excuses, but really our dreams have purpose. We may not value our dreams. If it's important enough to God to give them to us, maybe we should value them enough, maybe even sacrifice sleep to write it down, journal our dreams, and this will be discussed also later. In Jewish culture, spiritual dreams are valued as a divine encounter with God. Bedtime customs include inviting God to come and speak to them through dreams. Hebrew language makes little distinction between dreams and visions, whether it was an angelic visitation or a dream vis vision or prophecy, it was all considered to be supernatural communication with God. What are you thinking when you go to sleep? Let's look at some types of dreams. Job 33, it says, for God might speak in one way or another, yet man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and he seals their instruction to turn man from his deed, to conceal pride in man, and he keeps back his soul from the pit his life from perishing by the sword. God opens our ears in a dream because if he told us another way, we would argue with him. Our own logical thinking would seem better than his divine purposes. A dream may seal instructions to, to something. He tells you what he wants you to do, but you might not remember it. It's sealed, but no access to it. It carries weight. Sometimes it might be sealed because you are not ready to embrace the entire assignment, but he's building it into you to give you courage to do it. Another says that, that he gives you a dream to turn man from his deeds. Your personal condition may be revealed that brings a course correction in some area of your life. Sometimes there are things that you are doing or involved in that you need to change or go in another direction. Deeds of omission or commission. <clears throat> sometimes the dream is to conceal pride in you. Why? And that's why sometimes things are sealed in you. Sometimes there are things that you are going to do that if you did it on your own, you would think you are the source and be prideful. He has to seal them because if you rise up in pride, he'd have to judge you. He will fulfill his word, even if you don't remember it. Sometimes you will be aware only after you've experienced it. I think those are also called deja vu. Uh, those are the times where, where you say to yourself, oh my golly, I feel like I've done this. I feel like I've been here. I feel like I know this I, is, is very familiar. And I think that those are the, the times, those are the glimpses in our life that we call deja vu, that actually he's concealed things, he's sealed things up and concealed them in us for his purpose. That's just a guess. Soul dreams. It says to keep your soul from the pit and from perishing by the sword. He is preventing you from entering into temptation and even more, maybe from death. Warning dreams in Genesis 20, it says, but God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman you have taken. She is a married woman. This was Sarah, who was Abraham's wife. Abraham had let, uh, Sarah was extremely beautiful and desirable. The king took her in uh, to be a uh, part of his harem and, Ab and uh, didn't know that he was Abraham's wife but God told him in a dream. <clears throat> he, 
he will reveal his will in a dream. And one of the most amazing and clear is Jacob's dream with the open heaven. He, uh, where Jacob came to a certain place and he lay down to sleep and he dreamed. And this was the place where he saw the ladder set up on earth, reaching into heaven where angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and he said, I am the Lord of God of Abraham, your father, God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants will be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, the south, and in you and your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. He was afraid and he said, how awesome is this place. There is none other than the house of God, the gate of heaven. We see here how it, it, God can be so clear and so explicit in a dream and how encouraging. In, uh, in dreams, he will reveal the future as he did in Joseph's dream. Um, this, this is quite dramatic. He had two dreams. Joseph had a dream when he told his brothers they hated him all the more. And he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were, built, we were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rode, rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to us. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream of what he said. He didn't learn. He had another dream and he told his brothers, listen, he said, and I had another dream. This time the sun and the moon and the 11 stars are bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his brothers rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down the ground before you? It's interesting that the, his whole family was able to interpret the dreams accurately. His dreams were part of the culture. It's always a good idea to ask for wisdom before sharing your dreams. And you know what? Not, in, not only in this kind of situation where it's in, in your family or whatever, but this is a, this is a real good general uh, understanding. Ask the Lord if a dream is supposed to be shared or whether you're being developed in it for a purpose for, for a, that will um, reveal something for the better. In Judges, this is a great dream interpretation dream. And Gideon hearing a dream and the interpretation was encouragement. It will encourage you in your dreams. Gideon overheard a man, it was in, in the enemy's camp, sharing his dream. He said, I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force, the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, this can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, get up. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into our hands. So let's look at the elements of the dream, how he would know and interpret it. The Midianite invaders were nomads that lived in tents. The tent here represented the besieging army. In the, the wording was the tent would have been where the commanders were and it would take them all out. It was a specific tent, not just a tent. Barley was a food of the poor, which exactly described the situation of the Israelites at the time. For seven years, the Midianites had been stealing their crops and reducing them to eat barley, a food that was typically given to dogs or cattle. Barley was only eaten when there was nothing else to eat. So the interpretation is the barley cake smashing the tent indicates the Gideon's small army would be sent to destroy the Midianites. There are prophetic dreams like Joseph had when he was told to take Mary as his wife. And Daniel, it says that, that God will re reveal secrets that he has made known to you what will be. For protection and guidance comes from a dream, like uh, the wise men were warned not to return to Herod and they went another way. Okay. God reveals secrets. 
in J Daniel 2, when the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision, it was regarding Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And you can, Daniel's an amazing book to study on dreams and visions and, and uh, encounters. It, I really, really recommend it to you. God reveals the thoughts of your heart in dreams, Daniel 1, but for your sake, who make known the interpretations to the king that you may know the thoughts of your heart. Do you realize that sometimes the thoughts of our own heart, we don't know, but God can show us in a dream. Sometimes when anxiety and many cares override your peace, you might be having dreams from a, a disturbing, uh, from just a busy life, but they're disturbing dreams. And Ecclesiastes 5 says, as a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words, <clears throat> other dreams and types seem that seem to be common as well body dreams they can either be a result of physical sickness and this is the inter an interesting one in pregnancy at about five months in utero the baby begins to dream and at that time the mom and babe have crossover dreams so the mother might think uh, that that the dreams are confusing and indeed they are because the, her dream and the baby's dream are in, uh, superimposed on each other and make absolutely no sense so you can help pregnant uh, moms with that chemical dreams and these are the dreams that are a result of medications drugs alcohol or the proverbial pizza um, dreams Chemical in your body can cause glandular problems and nightmarish dreams. It is a physiological uh, situation. Intercession dreams are those that have a sense of urgency. They are extrinsic in nature and they cause us to pray for another person or future event that we may have seen in a dream. My friend Ruth had an ongoing dream about a child drowning and spent much time in intercession. The whole, the whole thing wasn't unveiled uh, to her, but the, the intensity and the sense of urgency didn't matter to her. She, she pressed in and, and would often phone, we'd pray together for this child. And um, so I just encourage you, whether you have all the details or not, when you have these dreams uh, and there's that sense of urgency, you, you can just trust God in it. Let him use you for whatever purpose. Healing dreams. This is where the Lord actually brings healing to you in a dream. And it can be a physical healing, emotional, relational. God is not bound to methods. And he also might reveal something for you for someone else. That's also in healing dreams. Cleansing dreams. These are really, really odd. They're caused by encounters that you have during the day with people with perverse natures or things that we see or read. We're constantly subjected to stuff around us, aren't we? God sends cleansing dreams or flushing dreams that actually washes us off and cleans us up. If you are actively pursuing intimacy with God and the unspeakable shows up in a dream, it may be as simple as him trying to, to uh, directing you to change or some Dreams can be weird, like kissing your brother. You know, those kind of, of, of uh, weird, weird things. For instance, being naked in your dream is often linked to humility. While it can be false humility, it generally may indicate that someone is humble, transparent, and their motives are pure. Remember, those dreams are within you. We're not seeing these on a screen. They're talking to you. You may see yourself in a bathroom dream. It also may represent in a spiritual cleansing that's already taking place or needs to take place in the dreamer's life. If the bathroom's in view of others, God will expose and remove the toxins publicly, establishing the character trait of humility in the dreamer. The good news is, and this is what John Paul uh, said, the good news is the spiritual cleansing is usually preparation for spiritual promotion. Spiritual warfare dreams are typically in black and white. They are sometimes a theme that happens over and over and these dreams are not a lot of fun and it seems like you're fighting in them and maybe not winning. Some clues in this dream are sometimes there's an item or items in color being highlighted that will help to direct you to deal with the issue. So don't ignore them and embrace them even though they're not, they're not comfortable. The Lord is unlocking something for you. Deliverance. God removes demonic forces from you without even knowing it. And this is Sam's dream. She was in our, 
our class and gave me permission to to share this this dream and it was outstanding she said i was having a dream and it had something to do with my family and i went into the bathroom closed the door and began to shower as i was in the shower i was singing a song that i'd been singing a lot i sang the words i want to be like a tree planted by living waters and i was washing my hair then a gale force wind blew through the shower, ripped the curtain, stopped the water, and I saw like an image of a black fly come out of me. I felt it, it as it was happening, and in my bed I awoke tingling, but I felt the force of something being pulled off, and I felt a sensation of being lighter. The lighter feeling was likened to what it feels like when you have x-ray, heavy x-ray vest on, and then it's removed. This dream itself brought this girl complete deliverance. In dreams, you'll get words of knowledge, solutions to problems, supernatural insight. And we saw those like Arnold Palmer's swing. Fear dream, dreams. These dreams open us, us up to dream what we're afraid of. What you fear, you empower. What you focus on, you become. These are a way that God will reveal your own issues to you for you to take action on. They may be strongholds, and strongholds are not demons. They are mindsets that keep you from moving forward. A stronghold can be a faulty attitude, thinking pattern, perception, belief based on lies and deception. Things you may be in adultery, you may in hatred, jealousy, obsessions, fears, etc. <clears throat> These are, are revealing dreams, and because when God gives them to you, it's because he wants you delivered completely from them. Dark dreams, they are gray or ominous, something's not right. They're color but muted, not well defined, uh, reveal the second heaven strategy. We pray against it and ask God to remove it and cut off the enemy's task tactics. What we're learning is that when we shift our attention from evil to good, Fear to love, it's the most powerful weapon we have. Take the dark dream, acknowledge it, then rewrite the script. Love never fails. And really, it's an, uh, the mud dream is an example. Intrinsic dreams are, uh, are inside of you. 95% of, uh, of our dreams are about you. God wants to strengthen you, bless you, encourage you, challenge you. What? How do you know what kind of uh, type of dream it is? If you take you out of it, would the dream make sense or would it fall apart? That's how you judge an intrinsic dream. In an extrinsic dream, you may be involved in the dream. Like you're painting an apartment with a friend. You see yourself, the colors, the configuration of the room, etc. If you take you out, would the dream still make sense? Sure. The room's still getting painted. Everything else stays the same. This would be an extrinsic, extrinsic dream about another person or the situation. For clarity, I would suggest tagging any dream you participate in at any time as intrinsic and any dream you are strictly observing as extrinsic. Remember, 95% of the time, the dream you have is about you. Intrinsic, mostly about you extrinsic, mostly about others. You're looking into the situation. You're not generally involved. When we say, I had a dream about you last night, it would probably be better said, I had a dream last night and you were there. Vibrant, unique, vibrant, lucid dreams. The only way to describe this kind of dream is it's really different. As we enter into lucid state of sleep, we temporarily leave this earthly dimension to walk in the dimension directed by the spirit, and we gain ability to receive creative downloads from God. They could be things like songs, novels, scientific or mathematical discoveries, paintings, inventions, etc. We saw many of those examples. And Proverbs 8 says, I dwell with prudence, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Lucid dreaming is an, ex an extraordinarily vivid form of mental imagery. It's a step above regular dreaming. If you've ever experienced it before, ask Holy Spirit to increase the level, intensity, and clarity of your dreams. Expect the Lord to tell you things hidden deep within his heart and to release his creative spirit within you as you dream. First Corinthians says, but God has revealed them through 
to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Lucid dreaming has the ability to have a measure of conscious activity and control in dreams. This means that we can actually change the outcome of these spiritual warfare dreams. In the midst of dark dreams that reveal the enemy's plans, we can command God's will and change the dream to line up with his purposes. As we learn to influence the events of our dreams, we will find that dark dreams will transform into full color. Lucid dreaming is a wonderful interaction with Father in a way that our awakened state is impossible at times. Lucid dreaming is a close experience to our ascension times when we are awake. There's a crossover here, and it's worth mentioning, and actually we are going to study it further, but in a separate, um, a separate time. In lucid dreaming, we can refuse the ungodly and undesirable and respond to God as he directs. In these dreams, you can cooperate with the results. And I'm going to tell you a little, little story because I learned how to, how to use this method in, in lucid dreaming. Ed and I, when we were first married, I, I had uh, a season of some real nightmares. They were just uh, irrational, didn't make sense, but I would wake up in a, a real state. And of course, Ed, Ed was there, he comforted me and, uh, and it helped a little bit. But then he told me how he dealt with things like that. So it's called Ed and the Bulls. He said, if I have a, a a dream and it's like bulls are 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 chasing me and they've got big horns and they are stampeding and they are after me and they want to hurt me and i'm running and running and i'm running away from these bulls but these bulls are overcoming and then i wake up and i wake up in this state and he, of fear and and everything and then he said you know what i do i say are you kidding me these bulls are nothing they are not they are not going to affect me and he said, I go back into the dream and I now go at the bulls. I pull the bulls uh, horns. I hold the bulls horns. I flip over the, the uh, like you see in movies, you know, flip over, over the bulls. The bulls get scared and, and run off. And I know it might sound funny. It might sound silly, but here's the thing. He turned the fear into courage. And we do the same thing and we can do the same thing. Turn that fear into love, turn the fear and, and use that energy in the coming in the opposite spirit. You can do that in lucid dreamings. In visions, is seeing really, really believing? The following visual il illustrations demonstrate that although you may still believe what you see, what you believe and what the objects actually represent may differ by a wide margin. We will see that two people can look at the same object and see two different things and both are correct. I know that many have probably seen this, but here we you're going to see either a young woman or an old woman. If you imagine the, the um, I'm trying to find the arrow, uh, the young woman, the black area here is her hair and you follow the arrow around, this is her chin and then to her, down her neck to a necklace. And there, I hope you see a young woman. To see the old woman, you'd start the same place. It would be, still be the hair, but instead of the face, you're gonna follow it and see a nose of a, a, an old woman. The, the mouth and the chin. Can you see that? Your brain wants to flip to either one or the other image, but if you study it long enough, you might see both images at once. Here, you will see a man with a sax, or do you see the lady's face? The man with the sax here, the, the eye, eye, nose, mouth of the lady. This is a little bit more difficult and it would take, uh, I should give you proper time, but we don't have the time. Do you see the two people kissing? I'm gonna help you. There you are. Sometimes we see, but we don't see. Sometimes our eyes can fool us. We're in a, in a diagram like this with the, the squares and the dots. Black dots seem to appear and then vanish at the intersections of the horizontal and vertical lines. Strangely, the illusion only seems to work at a distance. If you move your eyes close to the, the page, 
the illusion vanishes. Old Testament prophets were sometimes referred to as seers. It was recognized that these people could see things that other, others seemingly were unable to. New Testament visions were not just relegated to the prophets, but to various people and ordinary experience. Oh, I'm going to start again. New Testament visions were not just relegated to the prophets, the seers, but to various people and ordinary experience them. The book of Acts has many examples. The stoning of Stephen. He looked and he saw the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Peter <clears throat> was encouraged um, when Cornelius told them about a man who came in a vision at the ninth hour get bring in, in bright clothing. In Peter's vision in a trance, he said he saw vision, an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners. It came while I observed intently and considered. Acts 16, a vision to Paul in the night. He saw a man of Macedonia and he stood pleading with him, come over to Macedonia and help us. In that he concluded that the Lord had, had called them to go and preach. Paul again in a vision by the, by in the night by a vision. Now Paul, now the Lord spoke to Paul in a night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent for I am with you. I will, and no one will attack you or hurt you for I have many people in the city. In Acts 27, to, an angel came to Paul for there stood by me this night an angel of God whom I belong, whom I'm and whom I serve. A vision can be seeing into the supernatural, spiritual arena, or it can be a perception of the same. Visions can be experienced when a person is awake or when a person is asleep. Your natural senses experience the, the supernatural, the invisible realm of the spirit. You can be totally awake and in broad daylight. Visions when awake can be so real, it's difficult to distinguish between real and spiritual life. One time we were driving, Ed and I were driving home from a meeting and all of a sudden I saw a vision of a ship. It was a huge, huge ship. Uh, and it, I recognized it as a um, passenger ship and uh, it was white. It was just pure white. That's all I saw. And it was listing to the side and it was sinking, uh, going down uh, on, on its side. I didn't know what to do with it. I just said, Ed, this is really weird. This is what I see. And it was really, really clear. What it, what it did was I said, Lord, I don't know what's going on if you don't tell me more, but I just set my heart to pray for the, the uh, safety of the people, for the lives on the ship, that no one would be hurt. And uh, the next morning, it was really strange. Ed came and he, and he said, you need to turn on the, the news and see what's happening. And as, as we went to look, there was a vision, there, not the vision, it was an actual ocean liner in Italy that was, um, had hit some, some rocks and was on its side and sinking. It was, anyway, uh, Daniel 10, <clears throat> excuse me, seven, it says, I alone saw the vision for the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them. So they've, fled to hide themselves. This is not unusual when a person, um, maybe it's you, will see a, a vision in a place. You might be at a party, you might be in your home, uh, you might be in a mall. You'll see something, you'll see something happen and others around you won't see. Don't worry, just, just go with God and he will direct and protect you in anything. Acts 9, 7, Paul was in a vision and the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Genesis 46, when then God spoke to Israel in visions in the night and he said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here I am. Interactions like this is very interesting in that they appear to be a dream within a dream. When you hear your name called twice, it's important to listen and understand 
something is being established. And that goes for dreams that you have repeatedly, like you have two or three times. Pay attention, something is being established. Job 4.13, in disquieting thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falls upon man, visions can come in the night in the sleep. Could it be that deep sleep is needed for us to be able to see some of the things we need to see? If awake, we might argue with them and put our own spin on it. Always bring everything back, back to your father. In, dream, in dreams and visions, we understand the ways of God as well. Zacharias, the priest, saw a vision, and because he had unbelief, he was not able to speak when he came out of the temple. It said, when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. Why do you think they perceived that he had a vision? I believe it's because angels, dreams, and visions were part of the culture. And I believe it's time for it to become more of ours. Visions may come when you're driving your car, in prayer, in worship, while you're soaking, meditation, or just out of the blue. Like a flash, it can just be a flash vision, <clears throat> or it can be like a video played in your mind. It can be with vivid colors and clear pictures, a dream, like a, uh, a night in a dream. It can be externally like an open heaven experience or it can be internally a vision in your mind. So let's be open to our Heavenly Father in the ways of dreams and visions so that we can see and hear what he's doing and showing us today. So for homework, if you want a magic study, I would just go for the whole book of, of Daniel because there's so much throughout it. Um, but as we see, a vision is something that is seen either literally with your physical senses of seeing, or it's seen in a state of sleep or your spiritual perception. They were so common that it was difficult to tell the difference between real life and spiritual life. We see people in the Old Testament and New Testament that were familiar with the manifest presence of God. Dreams and visions were common to them. So let's allow the manifest presence of God to become our reality too. Next week, we're going to start with trances, dream language, the way God speaks through dreams. We're going to start dream interpretation, the practical tool, tools, and how to record your dreams. You're not going to want to miss it. Here we go. Well, <clears throat> thank you for joining in on this. Now, next session, we'll be with the group again. It's so much more fun when we're all together because we do get to interact and share our experiences. And a lot of the questions uh, that we have that can be answered in the group, we find so valuable and sometimes uh, just exactly what we need for the time. So we'll see you then. And until then, I love you. And may God bless you. May he bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. See you soon.